sort of like, unbeknownst to us, we kind of created this series of programs this summer of how to sort of take care of yourself and your clients. Uh, and we're continuing that theme today with the mind-body connection from Victoria Sierra. So please join me in welcoming Victoria. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Whoops. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, when, I, when Marion uh, talked to me earlier in the year about coming, um, I thought, oh, great, because I get to talk about two things that I'm passionate about. I figured out how to marry uh, the mind-body connection and energy psychology. Um, have any of you ever had move forward, any training in energy psychology. So something like emotional freedom technique, thought field therapy, any of Donna Eden's work. Yes? Well, I'm a dance therapist. I work with that as well. Okay. Okay, great. So I'm glad that a lot of you haven't because you're in for a treat. And regardless of how you feel coming here, I guarantee you you're going to feel better when you leave because we're going to play and have fun and Hopefully, um, you'll be willing to participate in some of the things that I've, I've planned for us this morning. <clears throat> One of the things that I, I want to start us out doing, I can imagine that many of you probably rushed around this morning to get here. You've got a busy day when you leave. So I want to invite you to participate with me in, in an energy psychology technique. And I'm going to say a little bit more later about the mind-body connection and energy psychology. But I think that in order to experience things about the body, you have to be in the body. Everybody agree? Okay. So all this requires is that you take your thumb and your forefinger. We're going to use these. These are going to be tools. But before we do that, if you could all just face forward, whichever way forward is for you. You don't have to be looking at me. And what you're going to do is inhale at the center, exhale to the right, so go ahead and do that now. Inhale at the center, exhale, and you can put your hands on. Exhale to the right. And what I want you to do is to really exhale and turn your head as far as you can go. Get um, in your peripheral vision. I want you to lock in what you can see. And as soon as you have that locked in, inhale and turn your head back to the center. And now you're going to inhale at the center, exhale to the, and turn your head to the left. Exhale and turn your head to the left. And again, notice what you see in your peripheral vision. When you have that locked in, then inhale, exhale back to center. So everyone's got what you can see on the side. OK, now you need your tools, your thumb and your pointer finger. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pointer finger and lay it right here at the top of your earlobe. And you're going to put your thumb behind your ear lobe, right there where it folds out. And all you're going to do is massage this fold. You're going to inhale and then exhale. And just massage and roll that fold down, exhaling down, exhaling down, exhaling down. When you get to the bottom, there's a little hole in your ear. Put your pointer finger in there and gently tug. Just gently tug. And you're going to start at the top again. We're going to do this three times. Inhale. You're going to fold. And Exhale and fold this down. Your ears might feel like they're starting to get a little warm. And when you get to the bottom, take your pointer finger, put it in this little hole, gently pull down. You start one more time. Inhale, exhale, rolling the ears down. Exhale, exhale. Always want to use your breath. Point your finger in these little holes. Pull down. Now just take a moment, take a breath, take a conscious breath, <coughs> check in, just notice what you're aware of. Anyone that feels brave enough to share something? When you check inside. Does anyone, so I'll help you, does anyone notice that they might feel calmer? that they might feel more, uh, their head might be clearer? You can raise your hands. I know something happened out there. Come on, don't be shy. 
So does anyone feel calmer? Does anyone feel more centered or focused? Hands up. Your head, any of you, head feel clear. Don't be shy. This is, this is the energy psychology. This is, when you do this with your ear, your ear has acupoints for your entire body. So when you massage your ear, you are giving yourself a full body massage. Right? So I know from doing this thousands of times that you must have felt something shift. You must have felt something different. Okay. Not over here? Nope. Didn't feel anything. Okay, well, I would want to talk to you later. The size of the ears. The size of the ears. No. Did your ears get warm? Yeah. Yeah. Warm. yeah. Did, did any of you start feeling a little warm? Right. So that's just getting the energy moving through your entire body. There's actually a, an acupuncture uh, procedure called auricular acupuncture that only uses the ears for acupuncture because of the energy buttons and switches in our ears. So this is a, a little example of how I use the energy buttons and switches to get grounded. So for those of you who recognize that you felt different, there was a shift from when you came in and sat down to what you feel now. So this is just a little technique that takes a few minutes, and that's all, to shift the energy in your body. And um, when I was, does anyone here in May for Julie O'Donnell's talk on the resiliency of children? Okay, well one of the things that she talked about which really got my attention was that the helpers, so those of you who are on the front line working with kids and abused folks on a daily basis, that you get stressed and overwhelmed by what you hear and what you see every day. Is that true? Right, is, that's true. And um, it, it has also been my experience in doing this work over the past 15 years that many professionals that I've worked with, including physicians, chiropractors, acupuncturists, teachers, therapists, don't always do such a good job of taking care of themselves. Is that true? Right. So when I knew I was coming, I wanted to make this presentation for you. That it's going to give you something that you can integrate <laughs> into what you already do to help yourself connect with your mind and body. Everything I'm teaching you you have in a handout, which we're going to go over in a minute. Everything I'm teaching you, you can easily integrate into your work with your clients. Easily. It's safe, it's painless, it's quick, and it's quite profound. Um, so I want to say something about the mind-body connection. In one of the handouts, I have a rather clinical definition of mind-body connection. But I want to teach you about the one that I use practically in my office every day with clients. And that is simply, can you feel your feet on the ground? Do you feel your head attached to your neck? And is your vision clear? When I do those three things with my clients, I get a lot of information. And I'm going to be showing you a technique that I call three steps to mind-body connection, and we're actually going to do that. Um, energy psychology is really about using your own body's energy buttons and switches, which are located in the meridian lines in your body. Has anyone ever had acupuncture? OK, a few of you. So when the acupuncturist puts the needle in your body, he's putting the needle in the energy line. That's called the meridian system. That's, it's like the wireless system in our body. If you looked at it, you couldn't see it. But actually what happens is all of our energy runs through those lines, and those lines touch every organ in our body. So those meridian lines, having the energy running and flowing freely, is really what helps you have optimal health. So we're going to be doing some uh, interventions, heaven's calling, some interventions with um, the meridian lines, in the energy psychology field, we also use the chakras. Have anybody ever heard of chakras, know what chakras are? OK, so depending on what system that you're studying with chakras, there are anywhere from 7 to 13 chakras. We're going to be using the basic chakra for one of the techniques that we do. So I'm going to direct you to your handouts. Everyone should have three sets. The first one is called the mind-body connection. This is just a little story about how I got into what I do. On the back page is what I want to direct you to. The f about in the middle of the page, there's a section called recommended reading. And I wanted to um, 
introduce you if you haven't heard of Brain Gym. Has anyone heard of Brain Gym? Yes, I heard a yes. Fantastic. The reason that I wanted to introduce you to this is because these techniques are using the body's energy buttons and switches. Um, and it's about whole brain learning. It repatterns the brain. Kids love to do these movements. It's very effective. Brain Gym is by Paul and Gail Dennison. It's very effective for people who have learning disabilities, dyslexia, ADHD, ADHD. It is a powerful little book. And what's very good, and I know a lot of you work with kids. Also, Brain Gym has a teacher's edition. So these are two really good books to have for working with kids. The other piece on this back page that I wanted to direct your attention to is the websites. So I've included some websites that explain more about energy psychology if you have a curiosity or an interest. So the second handout you have it um, has the three steps to mind-body connection, right? It looks like this. So I'm going to have you get that out. And we're actually going to do this. See, I need to take my watch. Paula, how, when do I need to end? At 9.30. Okay, thank you. So we're actually going to do this exercise. And again, I use this with my clients every day in the office. The way that it starts out is moving through resistance to help. But before I say that, let me ask you, um, besides me, does anyone have at least one client who's disconnected? Disconnected? Mind, body, disconnected? At least, do you have at least one client who disconnects? Raise your hands. So we can all see. We have these. Besides me, do any of you know at least one person in your personal life that disconnects? Right. Besides me, do any of you disconnect? Yes. With a show of hands, yes. So you know what? The truth is everybody disconnects. But on that disconnect continuum, some of us disconnect more than others. I mean, there are times like, you know, we, just, we, go, we daydream. We go into a trance. Those are ways of disconnecting, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, disconnecting, you mean between the mind and the body? Yes, yes. Have you ever been talking to someone and you notice that their eyes are glazed over? <laughs> now, do you think maybe they're disconnected? <laughs> yeah. Or do you ever talk to someone and they, like, they're looking right at you and they look very interested, but you know they're gone, right? Because it's something that you can feel. So we all do it. We do it to each other. We do it to our clients, our spouses. You know, we just do it. So I just I want to make sure that it's not us and them, that this is something that we all do, and to normalize that and to give you something that you can do about it. Because there's times when you really need to be connected. So the first step in this, the truth is, do you ever like know that you need to be doing something to help yourself, but you just can't quite make yourself? Yes? Right. So this first step is about helping you move through resistance. And I have found it extremely effective, not only with myself, but with my clients. So all that's required is your two hands. Okay? So put your left hand up. On this side, where your pinky finger is, is an energy button and switch, actually. It's an acupoint. And so when you tap on this point, what actually happens is it shifts brain waves, actually. And there's a statement on here that's called, the, it's like the setup. So if you would play along with me, I'm going to say the statement, and would you please just do this with me? And we're going to do this three times, and you're going to tap consistently on this side, not difficult, not hard that you hurt yourself, but enough that you can feel the pressure. So are you willing to just repeat after me and do this? OK. Even though, Even though I don't know what I'm doing. I deeply and completely love and accept myself, honor and respect myself, and I forgive myself for not knowing what I'm doing, and I forgive anyone else who may have caused that, even though I don't even believe this works. 
I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Honor and respect myself. Honor and respect myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. For not believing that this works. For not believing that this works. And I forgive anyone else. And I forgive anyone else. Who may have contributed. Who may have contributed. To my not believing that this works. To my not believing that this works. And even though. Even though. I really don't want to help myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself, honor and respect myself, and I forgive myself for not really wanting to do this, and I forgive anyone else who may have contributed to my not wanting to do this. Okay, stop and take a break. That was kind of fun, huh? So this is something that you can do to get the ball rolling. I do this with clients all the time. It is profound. I've had clients sitting in my office with their hand, face in their hands, crying in despair. I tell them to get their hands up and tap, and they shift. And then they're willing to do something for themselves to get themselves grounded. It is quite powerful. And it didn't hurt, right? So it's harmless. OK, the second step is to actually ground the body. And the way that it's really fun to do is in pairs. So could you just like pair up with someone next to you? And would, would you be willing to stand up for this? So just quickly get into pairs. OK. Does everybody have a pair, have a partner? Okay, would you come up here and help me? <laughs> and you are? Wayne. Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Thanks. This is going to be painless, I promise. Okay, um, quickly decide who's going to be partner A and who's going to be partner B. And partner A, raise your hand. Okay, so all of you who are partner A, so I need you to be partner A, is that okay? Oh. All of you who are partner A, if you would just say the word out loud, ungrounded. Ungrounded. Okay. Partner B, raise your hand. Okay. So partner B, if I can get you just to turn them to the side, great. Just like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, if I may, just gently push on your sh shoulder. Sure. Would that be right? So, part, so what partner B is going to do is gently push, but firmly, on your partner's shoulder. He's a big, tall guy, and look what I did, right? Just, no, nope, just once. So what did you notice? <laughs> just once, once, gently, <laughs> once, gently. Okay, partner A, did you all move off your spot? Yeah? Everybody moved, right? Yes. Okay, so now those of you who were the one that got pushed, I'm going to show you how to ground yourself. So it requires your imagination. This is where we use the chakra, which is a, a button for this particular technique. Can everyone see me? We're going to use the chakra here. So the way that you ground yourself is to imagine. So I want you to use your imagination that you can send golden cords the size of gnarly tree trunks, big tree trunks, right? I know there's a lot of different ways to do grounding. This is the one that I use. I like it. So just humor me. So send golden cords from your basic chakra, the size of gnarly tree trunks. Imagine those cords running down your legs, out the soles of your feet, 20 feet into the earth, and 20 feet wide. So, and then when you get ready to send the cords out loud, say the word now. And then take a breath and just notice what happens. Okay. That's, and I'll go through it with you. So are you ready? OK. You're going to send golden cords the size of gnarly tree trunks down your legs, out the soles of your feet, 20 feet into the earth, and 20 feet wide. Use your imagination. And when you get ready, just say the word now. OK. Have all the partner A's sent the cords? OK. Now. Partner B, you get to push gently one time. Ready? 
push. I am pushing really hard. <laughs> what happened? What? So what was different? You were grounded. Exactly my point. Yes. Great. Okay, switch. Okay, now let's now so switch up now. Those of you who were okay, so those of you so partner B needs to unground. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it too. Okay, I'm ungrounded. Okay, partner A, now you get to push. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's ground. Okay, everybody ground. Send those golden cords the size of gnarly tree trunks down your legs, out the soles of your feet, 20 feet into the earth, 20 feet wide. And say, now when you're ready. Now. Now. Okay, I'm ready. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, so were you grounded? Okay, thank you. Wasn't that fun? Okay, just sit down. <laughs> were you surprised? Was anybody surprised about what happened? Was anybody surprised about what happened? No? Yes? No's and yeses, okay. Does anyone remember what they felt in their body when they got grounded? Heavy. What? heavy. Yeah. Felt very heavy. Very heavy. Okay, anybody else? Same. Be brave. Strong. Strong. Feet, felt heavy. Feet felt heavy. Like, did you feel rooted in the earth or connected, like, to the ground? Solid. Solid. You know, when you think about it, <clears throat> not only physically do you feel rooted, but psychologically and emotionally you can feel rooted when you have your feet underneath you. And it's kind of interesting if, you know, that, the person that touched you did not touch very hard, right? And it always re gives me this good visual of how a lot of times we're out there in the world sort of wobbling around like this, not taking care of ourselves very well, not making very good decisions for ourselves. And it reminds me of how important it is to be grounded for ourselves. So that's the second step. And thank you for doing that. I, that's my favorite part of the talk. Um, and then the third step to connection. So you're out of resistance and you're grounded. The third thing that you want to do, because we, we want to get the mind and the brain and the head attached to the body. So the third step then is what's called the medulla unhold. So basically the un is, just means under the nose and you hold it. Remember I mentioned buttons and switches. This is a button and switch. It's an acupoint. You take your other hand, so put one hand under your nose. Take your other hand, flat palm right here against the back of your head and hold it firmly. You're going to stick your tongue on the roof of your mouth. The reason that you do that energetically is there's a meridian line that runs up the front of your body to just under your lip that starts at the perineum, runs on, up the back of the body to the top lip. So when you are holding this position with the tongue on the roof of your mouth, you are connecting the flow of your energy around, which is, sorry, which is how energy is supposed to flow in our body. It's supposed to go like this, not get stuck. And you would always do this with your legs uncrossed, feet flat on the floor. That's okay, I looked around and saw some. And you would hold this position for two minutes. When you do this with your clients and yourself, you can really feel something changing in your brain. Sometimes people feel energy moving around, or they just notice that their vision gets clear when they stop, or the fog is lifted, or the grayness is gone from their looking out. And you're just breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay, I'm going to have you put your hands down. And take a minute and just check in and notice if you feel any different. You might not, or you might. Does anyone notice that the room looks brighter or the brighter? 
Yeah. Or the grayness is gone. So can you imagine how beneficial this would be to give yourself this gift like during the day when you notice that you're on automatic pilot and you don't know how you're going to get through the next three hours with your clients, right? Because don't we all think that sometimes? Yeah. So if you did something like this, you would be in your body, your brain would be balanced. One of the things about this medulla on hold, you know, why this is so great for clients too is because a lot of times their emotions have taken over their logic and their reasonable rational functioning and they can't think clearly, right? So if they can get their brain balanced so the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain are imbalanced, you have a much different therapy hour with your client. Much different. You can actually get some therapy done because they're in their body, their brain is balanced, they are present. Do any of you ever have clients that just aren't present and they can't get present? Yeah. So um, can, can you imagine any, um, any ways that you might use this? Just off the top of your head. Could you think of a time during your day when it might be helpful? Anyone willing to open their mouth and say? Before a staff meeting, yes! <laughs> yes. What if you don't want to be president? <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, I would say, you know, I would say don't go to the meeting. Yeah, that's what I'd say. When you're in a meeting, um, I don't know if you can see me or not, but here's a little, uh, a little variation on this one. Now, I will say that I use these techniques in public. And people probably think I'm weird, but I don't care. I just want to feel good. So when you're in a meeting, what you can do is cross your right ankle over your left ankle. So you're sitting there in the meeting. Maybe you're under a table. Maybe you've just got papers in your lap. You would take your left arm and put it over your right, you know, just there on your lap. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and hold it for two minutes while you're listening to someone. And you're going to be balanced when you're done. So you can do that in the meeting. It's the same thing, the crossover. You just want to make sure that it's opposite. So the right ankle, the left wrist. So you can do that in your meeting. So Marion, if you see anyone in staff meetings do that, you know what's going on. So that's really helpful. A lot of, I work with a lot of high-level managers, and they use this technique all the time. OK, the other handout you have is called the five-minute daily energy routine. This work is, um, these techniques are taken from Donna Eden's work. And um, when I talk with uh, people and teach them about this, these techniques are to be, um, you know there's that commercial that says don't try this at home? These are to be used at home. These are to be used anytime, not just well I did it this morning or I did it yesterday. These are really to add to your toolbox of self-care techniques whenever you personally know that you need some kind of support. I do these I do this every morning. I find that it's difficult to we all have busy lives, right? Full busy lives. And it's difficult to integrate something new into our lives, but I find that it works the best if you integrate new tools with something that you already do. So I've attached this to, like for me, in the morning after a shower. However, so there's five things here that we're going to do. These things can be taken out of this context and used for what you need. For these five things, that, these techniques that we're going to do, I put on there what it's for. So let's say, for instance, you need an energy boost. You could do the first one. Or if your head, you've been working around the computer and you notice that your head is congested, you can do number three. So there's a specific purpose. These are the body's energy buttons and switches. They're there, and I just want to teach you how to use them and get curious about it. So we're going to move in. <clears throat> does anybody have any questions so far when I sit like about energy buttons and switches? Does that make sense? 
it makes sense. It might be foreign. Yes, Sharon. Yes, very relevant to headaches. Very re Actually, if you do um, the, the ear pull that we did the first, and the instructions for that are on, on one of those pages. If you combine the ear pull with number three, and then just tap above your ear, around, down your neck, that is very effective for relieving a headache. You can kiss a leave goodbye. And very quickly, you can get relief. Um, I, I wouldn't say that this, um, these three in themselves are good enough for um, a migraine, but for your regular stress headache or just a headache that you get, takes care of it with less than five minutes. Good question, thank you. So, how about if you want to play? Let's do this. Okay, on your feet? Is that okay? So you can just put your instructions down. It's there for you. And I'm going to read through here and make sure that I have it just right so that we can do it. Um, K27. So the, this is a uh, button and switch. It's the kidney meridian number 27. Place your middle finger and thumb just under your collarbones where they almost meet. So right here. Okay. Then cross your hands one over another. It doesn't matter how you cross. You want to get both middle fingers on these, right below these bones where they cross. Can everyone see? Middle fingers. You're going to just massage. You can massage your tap. I find that some people get irritated by the tapping, so they don't like the tap. Some people don't like the massaging. So it's whatever your body likes. So you're just going to massage and breathe. And you only just do it, I do it about 12 times when I do it. Then what you're going to do is leave um, thumb and middle finger here at the, at the bones. You're going to put your other hand on your navel, and you're going to massage. So you do like three massages here. Or you can tap. You don't, you don't massage your navel unless you're really good at moving both hands. You just keep that hand, just massage up here. Then switch hands. The other hand goes on the navel. The other hand is up here massaging the meridian points. This wakes up the body. And I want you to be your own detective while we're doing this. Notice what happens. Notice how your energy changes in your body. Some of you might already notice that you're a little more energized. OK, so then the next step is, the th um, is to move down the sternum, down to the sternum. and it, so it's way down here, like between your breastbone. You can do it with your fingers or with your fist. I think about Tarzan going, ah! And I just, you can even laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Whatever you like to do, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel good. So you're going to tap there, remembering to breathe. And then the spleen points. So those are at the bra line, guys. Sorry, but just imagine. OK. And then you're, it's uh, down one rib below your breast, about an inch. You're just going to massage those. I like to use my thumbs because I can really get in. I will warn you that uh, that can be the area can be very tender. So this is like the first step to waking up your body. So just take a minute and check. Is it tender? Yeah. yeah. Um, check. Just take a minute and check in. Notice if your energy feels any different from when you started. Anyone? Anyone notice? Okay. The next one is called the cross crawl. Now, here's an interesting thing that I discovered when I was doing my research about this. Um, if an infant does not crawl, they often have learning disabilities. This is why. Um, infants aren't born with a cross crawl, cross crawl pattern. That has to be built in to the brain. The way that that pattern is built in is when they crawl. So that's kind of interesting, like for those of you who work with kids. They, um, and they er end up with learning disabilities. So this is a good one to teach children how to do. So all you're going to do is put your right hand up and bring your left knee up. And just moderate for yourself however you want to move. However you can do that, but the idea is you want to get the arms and the legs opposite. And you would do this 12 times. 
So I want to have a stop for a minute. Is anyone having difficulty doing this movement? Uh, please, if, you, if you are, tell me, because I want to help you correct that. Is, is anyone having difficulty with the crossover? Usually there's one or two in every group. Okay, nobody is? No one, honest, no one's having trouble with it. Okay, so let's do some more. And only bring your knees up. Now you can make it more aerobic for those of you who are physically fit and really get your elbows and knees up, but you don't have to. So check in, stop. What do you notice about your energy? I'm tired. You're tired. <laughs> were you having trouble doing this? No, I don't think so. I think you were. Do this. Was, was this Just, mm-hmm. Notice how that's easier. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that means that you were reversed. That's why I said, if you're having trouble, tell me. I want to help you. Now, if you do this, you will not be tired. Go at your pace. Go slow. You might be going too fast for you. So notice how, <laughs> notice how you're doing that differently now? Uh -huh. Yes. So if you're having trouble with this, do this first. It gets your energy going in the right direction. Okay. I said there was one or two in every group. Thank you. So I imagine that you're feeling a little more energized. Okay, good. Okay, that one is for balance and to harmonize your energy. The third one is called the Wayne Cook posture. And this is the variation that I was telling you about with this one. We're just going to do a little piece of this. And if you have trouble crossing your ankles and standing up, please sit down to do this. So we're going to do the left ankle over the right ankle. Left ankle over the right ankle. Arms out in front. Cross your right wrist over your left wrist. Bring your palms together. And then tuck your arms under. If you have trouble tucking your arms under, then just do them like that. Find out what you can do, OK? Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. You want the energy flowing. Take three breaths in through, so yeah, just cross your arms, yeah. And lay it, put it, there you go. Good job. Tongue in the roof of your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose. Out through your mouth, unhook. And you're going to cross the left ankle over the right ankle. Did we just do that? We just did that. Right ankle over left ankle. I do it differently in my office. Okay, right ankle over left ankle. Arms out in front. Left over right. Palms together. Duck them under. Tongue on the roof of your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Again in. One more time. Uncross. Your timing was perfect. Bring your hands together in prayer position. <coughs> Tongue on the roof of your mouth. In through your nose. In through your nose. One more time. OK, then just take a minute and check in. Go inside. Notice what you're aware of. Any feedback about what you're noticing? Shoulders feel lower. Must be you're relaxing. Okay. I feel lighter. You feel lighter. Okay. I see you nodding your head too. You feel lighter too? Okay. Tingling fingers, that means energy is moving in your body. Anybody feel a little bit warmer? Again, that's energy moving in the body. Okay. Any questions so far about one through three? I have a question. How come you have to say put your tongue at the roof of your mouth? Where does it normally go? I mean, isn't it usually there? Mm-mm. The so if you... There's a, a little pocket 
up there and the roof of your mouth, which is where you hold it. So no, normally my tongue is not there. It's all over the place, but it doesn't hang out up there. <laughs> but that's a good question. That's a good question. No one's ever asked that, so I'm glad you did. Yeah. So for some people, you just have to consciously hold that position to get the energy flowing. Okay, any other questions so far? Okay. Can you think about any applications for this in your personal daily life? Yes, maybe, possibly, okay. So let's do, um, oh, I have two number threes. Uh, the crown pull, which is really number four. Um, that relieves mental congestion. We talked about headaches. We talked about working around the computer a lot. Ladies, you, if you do this right, you'll mess your hair up. So I just want to warn you that. Take your thumbs, put them at the sides of your temples. And you need your fingers. So you're going to put your fingers in the center right here by your eyebrows. You'll inhale and drag your fingers across your forehead. Now, if you have makeup on, you might not want to do this really hard. It'll mess up your makeup, too. So you're actually stretching the skin across your forehead. And breath is so important to being connected, conscious breath. Then you would move up to your scalp line and inhale. And then exhale and drag your fingers across the scalp line. And then to the top of your head, inhale. Across the top of your head. Drag your fingers on the exhale. You always do the release on the exhale breath. And then around to the back of the head at the top. Inhale and drag your fingers across. Down here at the bottom at the ridge. Inhale and drag your fingers across. Then you come to the side of the neck. Inhale and oh, that always feels so good. And then at your shoulders right here. Inhale and bring your hands down across your shoulders. You would do that three times. Did anyone feel any different just with the one? Yeah. So I use that one a lot um, to help my head feel better. And if you do it three times, it takes about 15 seconds. So again, if you think about, um, do you have 10 minutes in between sessions? Do you have the 50-minute hour, maybe five minutes? Any? Some of you. So if you have time between clients, you can take a couple minutes and do something to help yourself get reconnected. The spinal flush, this is an excellent one to use. It clears the emotions from the body. So you, it's using your whole spine as a button and switch, and it gives you an energy boost. There are, um, besides just doing this on yourself, which I'm going to show you how to do, Really great ways to use this um, for those of you who have children when they come home from school. It's great to flush them out. Yeah. Or at, <laughs> truly, they feel so much better when they get all those emotions from the day out of their bodies. Um, for those of you who have uh, partners or spouses, one of the things that's really helpful to do is if an argument is ensuing, if you have a willing partner, you could say, hey, let's just get this flushed out. And if you do that to each other, you have a whole different conversation. Truly, it works. Um, and, and it feels very good as well. So you start this right here, where the brainstem ends and the spine begins. You never, never, ever, ever, did I say never, press on the spine. Never, never. Along the spine. And you would inhale and just press alongside the spine. And inhale and just press alongside the spine. And you'll get to a place where you can't reach anymore. So then you come around and you take your thumbs, however far, and there might be a little space that gets skipped. And then you would inhale and press, inhale and press, inhale and press and press all the way down to the tailbone. And again, you would do this three times. 
once you've done it, the, we're not going to do it in, because of time. After you've done the third times, you would just take your hand and sweep all the energy, all the emotions. Because, you know, you don't really want that negative stuff in your body, right? You just want to get rid of it. So you would sweep it down and out. <laughs> no, but what you can do is imagine that there's a little fire there and the energy just goes into the fire. Good questions, Carol. You're not Carol. That's Carol. I forgot your name. Mary. Mary. Thank you. Good questions, Mary. This is Judy. 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 Okay. Good questions, Judy. Good questions. Okay. So we've got the spinal flush. And then we have two more. This is, we're going to do the zip up and the hook up. Both of these protect you from... <clears throat> have you ever been around anyone that you notice there's like bad vibes? Um, there are energy vampires in the world, truly. You may even know some. So, I'm sorry? Grandkids. Well, I never thought about that. Okay. I thought there were money vampires. Um, so what, you ha what this does is it gives you some tools to protect yourself energetically. Because, okay, so you've done, it's the last one for good reasons, because you've done all this energy, you're energized, your brain is balanced, you're grounded, and then... You go out into the world where there's negativity, right? So we've built in a way that you can protect yourself. And there are two simple things that you can do. One is called the zip-up. Now, on the handout, it says briskly tap K27. So if we're not going to do that now because we've already done the tapping and your body is awake. But if you're sitting in your office and you've had a long day and you notice that, wow, I need to do this zip-up, then you would just tap, wake up the body, then you would do the zip-up and the hook-up. So what you will do is, um, what are you going to do first? We're going to do the zip-up. Remember I said there's an energy line that goes up the front of your body. That's not me, right? There's an energy line that goes up the front of your body. And I want you to imagine that it's a zipper. So what you can do is combine the zip up with something that you want to affirm for yourself whether it's I'm safe I have clarity um, I'm what would be a word that you might want to use relaxed. I'm relaxed okay okay so you can combine that word with the movement of the hand and it, so I'll show you first so you it goes from the from the pubic bone all the way up. If you go slow enough, you can actually feel the energy move. You just bring it up to the bottom of your lip, because that's where the line ends, and across. You don't want to, and then, then let it go. You don't want to do this and then move your hand down because you're unzipping. Right? You want to zip it up. So think about a word that you might want to use for the rest of the day. Make it yours. And um, we're going to zip up, and we're going to do it three times. So you just flat hand, the side of your hand up. Just move it up. Inhale, move it up with your breath. And when you get to the bottom of the lip, across. There you go. And just sweep your hand around and start over. Bring it up. Across. Let go. One more time. Make that affirmation yours. And let it go. And then just take another breath. Okay. Last one. This is called the hookup. And, because this might seem weird, but what you do is you put one finger in your belly button, middle finger, Take your other hand, middle finger pointed down to your nose. And you're going to, so I'll tell you first, you're going to inhale, pull up on both of those at the same time. And what happens is that your body hooks up on the inside automatically and you will just exhale. So let's do it again. Inhale. And really, see if you can go inside, close your eyes, let yourself feel the hookup. You can feel your chest, your solar plexus, and then your navel. 
when you've hooked up. If you really slow it down and go inside, you can feel it. And a lot of people find that very comforting because they can feel the hookup. Any questions? Comments? I have a question. When you're working with clients, you, do you do traditional therapy after you have them relaxed and focused, or is this the therapy? Mostly I do energy psychology anymore. I do have a traditional, yeah, you can sit down, thank you. Um, I have a uh, traditional therapy background. But I, um, even with clients that I do traditional talk therapy with, I can always find something in the energy psychology work to integrate into my, my work with them, even if it's something as simple as uh, helping them ground or teaching them how to breathe consciously. You know, one of the things that the research is showing about the midbrain, this is a little aside, is that, um, so the midbrain is where the fight, flight, freeze, is that uh, with belly breathing, that calms that hair trigger response. So if I can get a client to take a few conscious breaths, again, we have a whole different session, whole different session. So, and then people get pretty excited about the fact that they feel empowered to make their day better or to make their day different or um, people who have never felt their feet on the floor, have never been in their body, the first time they do that, I mean, they just cry tears of joy. It's like, oh my God, I never realized that I could never feel my feet on the floor. It's really a joyful experience. And then they want to do it. And then sometimes they don't want to do it. They're resistant. So I will, um, I will go with what's showing up. And if someone doesn't want to do this tapping, I'll say, okay, We've worked together for a while. I've taught you a lot of things. Is there one thing that you know that you would be willing to do in this moment? Because all you have is this moment. And I want to invite you to do something different in this moment than you've ever done so that you can have a different experience, a different outcome from what you always do. And people, you know, I've never had someone not buy into that. People, I believe, people really do want to get better and feel better. And so I'm always looking for ways that are quick and painless and effective. And that's why I love energy psychology work. That was a great question. Thank you. Any other questions? OK, any comments? Like, do, does, uh, does anyone feel differently than when they walked in the door? Yes. Do you feel more energized? Is your head clearer? You might have a different day now. Yes. Okay, I think that's it. And I'm just a few minutes short of my time. Thank you very much. This was so much fun.